Have you ever seen a 10-page paper and thought to yourself, how am I ever going to get through this? Fear no more. My name is Naveen Vivek, an undergraduate researcher of the Cam Squared Research Group, and today I'm going to give you tips and tricks to help you read a research paper as efficiently as possible. So why read a research paper? Research papers are considered to target a niche audience, and I think it's about time we broke this trend. Research papers are educational and can often provide information that the public is not aware of. Anyone can read a research paper as long as they are determined to and learn how to read the research paper as explained in this video. All right, let's get into it. First of all, what do you need before you start reading the paper? Reading a research paper can take time and so you need to mentally prepare yourself. I would personally suggest having the following. A bottle of water because we don't want to pass out while reading, do we? A small snack like a fruit, for example, in case you're feeling hungry. A notebook. This is in case you need to scribble a lot and it won't fit on the paper itself. A printed copy of the paper. This is a personal preference because I like writing on the paper itself, but it's fine if you prefer annotating a PDF of the paper. Pens are different color, like red and green. Red to highlight concepts you don't understand and green to highlight concepts that you do understand. And most importantly, no phone next to you. This is to ensure that we have no distraction while reading the paper. Now that we have the preliminary stuff down, let's start reading. The paper that I've selected in this video is the YOLO version one paper. YOLO stands for You Only Look Once, and it's a computer algorithm that detects objects and displays out bounding boxes like shown here. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have a proper understanding of the paper abstract. We present YOLO, a new approach to object detection. Prior work on object detection repurposes classifiers to perform detection. All right, I don't quite understand what a classifier is, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in red. Instead, we frame object detection as a regression problem. I don't quite understand what regression problem is, so I'm going to highlight that as well. To spatially separate bounding boxes and associated class probabilities, a single neural network. Now, I have a vague understanding of what a neural network is, so I'm going to highlight that in green for the time being. Predicts bounding boxes and class probabilities directly from full images and one evaluation. One evaluation is important. Since the whole detection pipeline is a single network, it can be optimized end-to-end -end directly on detection performance. Our unified architecture is extremely fast. Our base YOLO model processes images in real time at 45 frames per second. 45 frames per second sounds important. I'm going to highlight that. A smaller version of the network, fast YOLO processes an astounding 155 frames per second, while still achieving double the MAP of other real-time detectors. I don't quite understand what MAP means, so let's look that up. Compared to state-of-the-art detection systems, YOLO makes more localization errors which I don't understand, but is less likely to predict false positives on the background. Finally, YOLO learns from general representatives of objects that outperforms other detection methods, including DPM and RCNN, both of which I'm unfamiliar with, so I'm gonna highlight that as well, while generalizing from natural images to other domains like artwork. Okay, so now that I've read through the abstract, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna ask you to look up all the terms that you don't understand, which are highlighted in red, and then reread all the terms that you highlighted in green, just so that you have a proper understanding of what we've read till now. Okay, so now that we have the abstract down, let's get into the nitty gritty. Human glance at an image and instantly know what objects are in the image, where they are, and how they interact. The human visual system is fast and accurate, allowing us to perform complex tasks like driving with little conscious thought. Fast, accurate algorithms for object detection would allow computers to drive cars without specialized sensors, enable assistive devices to convey real-time information to human users, and unlock the potential for general-purpose responsive robotic systems. Current detection systems repurpose classifiers to perform detection. To detect an object, these systems take a classifier for that object and evaluate it at various locations. Okay. So, that was quite a lot. So, I've already understood what repurpose classifiers are from Googling the abstract. And now I also have an understanding of what DPM is. That is also from the abstract. Using a sliding window approach, which you would have learned when you looked up DPM. So now RCNN also I have a vague understanding of. Bounding boxes and then run a classifier in these proposed boxes. After classification, post-processing used to refine the boxes, eliminate. So I don't quite understand what they mean by post-processing. So I'm going to highlight that. These complex pipelines are slow and hard to optimize because each individual component must be trained separately. Okay, 
Let's look up pipelines because I vaguely heard of the word, but I don't quite have an understanding of what it means. We reframe object detection as a single regression problem, straight from image pixels to bounding boxes and class probabilities. You only look once, YOLO is refreshingly simple. A single convolutional, well, I don't quite understand what convolutional network means. Predicts multiple bounding boxes and class probabilities. First, YOLO is extremely fast. Complex pipeline, I've already highlighted pipeline once. Our base network runs a 45 second, 45 frames per second. I'm going to highlight that in green because I understand what that means. So Titan X GPU, that's just a type of graphical processing unit. 150 FPS, less than 25 milliseconds of latency. Furthermore, YOLO achieves more twice the mean average position. So if you'd already looked up what MAP means, that is actually what mean average position. For a demo, so this is an important link to note down. If you're once you've done reading this paper, feel free to look at that link. It will give you a very good idea on what the source code looks like. Okay. Congratulations. You are now done with your first page of the YOLO paper. So what next? So once you're finished reading the paper, I would go ahead and note down all of your questions. And if you have any questions that you're unable to find online, I would go ahead and ask them to a friend or a colleague or an expert in the field as soon as possible, just so the ideas are still fresh in your mind. So a couple extra tips that I personally recommend. The first one is a five is to one ratio. While reading research papers, I always have a five is to one study to break ratio. Realistically speaking, you can't expect yourself to sit down for hours nonstop. Instead, read the paper for 50 minutes and take a 10 minute break and repeat this as many times as required. Page by page, when you're reading a paper, you can't stop line by line and clarify your questions. Instead, read through the entire page and then clarify all the questions you had on that particular page. That way, you're not having to reread every line, but instead, you have a brief review of the page you just read. Stopping line by line can ruin the flow of a paper, and this is quite demotivating while reading. Changing spots. Sometimes, I get super frustrated by sitting in the same spot while reading a paper. Instead, what I do is, after every hour, I change my location of reading. This is a personal preference and does not apply to everyone. However, I find this really useful because I feel refreshed and re-energized after changing my surrounding environment. Pacing. Halfway into the hour, I feel restless, and a simple and easy solution to this is pacing or walking while reading. Bibliography. Once you're done with the paper, look at the bibliography and see if there are any papers there which catch your attention and could possibly be relevant to your research. There you have it, Naveen's tips and tricks to reading a research paper. Final takeaways from this video, read page by page, note down all your questions, and never hesitate to ask for help. Thank you for watching and happy reading. This is Naveen Vivek, an undergraduate researcher of the CAM Squared Research Group, signing off. Thank you.